The gate behind me is called the Gateway of the Gods, and it was built several thousand years before the Inca arrived here. Building with stones that weigh 100,000 pounds is like playing a game of Tetris where every piece is a house. If you make one mistake, you cannot just start over. This is why the latest three-dimensional scans of Olante Tambo have left modern builders feeling totally confused. Olante Tambo is a mountain fortress. It's renowned specifically for the incredible sized blocks. These scans show that the most complex work is actually at the bottom, suggesting the best technology came first. It's a backwards timeline that points to a lost civilization. We are finally seeing the proof that someone else might have been there before the Inca arrived. Hidden Secrets of the Sun Temple When you stand in front of the wall of the six monoliths, the first thing you notice is the perfect fit. These stones are not just stacked. They are joined with such a perfect fit that you cannot even slide a thin razor blade between them. The surfaces are not rough like you would expect from someone hitting them with other rocks. Instead, they are polished until they shine almost like a mirror. But here's the catch. The way these walls were built seems to change right in the middle. It looks like one group of builders with amazing skills started the work, and then a completely different group with much lower skills tried to finish it hundreds of years later. In early 2025, a group of researchers used ground-penetrating radar and laser scanning to look deep into the stone. What they found has basically changed how we see the whole site. The crazy part is that the scans showed tool marks that do not match the bronze tools the Inca used. These marks are too deep and too steady to be made by hand. It's as if the stones were sliced with a hot knife. This has led many experts to wonder if we are missing a big part of the story. Maybe the Inca did not build the whole thing from scratch. Maybe they found a site that was already half finished by a much older group that had very smart ways of working with stone. The site of Olentaytambo is famous because it was where an Inca leader named Manco Inca actually beat the Spanish soldiers in 1537. It was one of their only big wins against the invaders. But the mystery everyone talks about is at the top of the mountain. The Temple of the Sun is made of red granite. This is an extremely hard rock. On the scale experts use to measure hardness, it is almost as tough as hardened steel. What most people don't realize is that trying to carve this rock with a bronze chisel is like trying to cut a tree with a plastic fork. It just wouldn't work. How did a group of people with no iron or steel tools manage to make these blocks so flat and smooth? The old story says they just used a lot of workers and a lot of time. They say they ground the stones together until they fit. But the new scans show that the joints go very deep into the wall, maintaining that same perfect fit the whole way back. You can't achieve that just by rubbing two 50-ton rocks together. So, here's the deal. The math of the old story just does not work anymore. We are looking at a level of planning and skill that belongs in the modern world, not the ancient one. This mystery makes us wonder if there was an even older city buried under the one we see. The scanning project in 2025 was the most detailed look at the site ever. The team used lasers that can map things down to a tiny fraction of an inch. They wanted to see the tiny scratches left behind by the tools. And that's putting it lightly because what they actually saw looked like nothing from the Inca era. Instead of the messy marks made by stone hammers, they found very steady, even lines. These lines suggest that the tools were moving at a constant speed and with the same amount of pressure every time. Dr. Carlos Mendoza, one of the main geologists, was stunned by the surfaces of the six giant stones. He explained that when you work with hard rock using stone tools, it always leaves a certain look. It leaves tiny pits and scratches that go in different directions. But these stones are smooth at a level you can only see with a microscope. The surfaces look almost like they were vitrified, which means they were turned into something like glass by high heat. This is not something a bronze chisel can do. It suggests a construction method that we simply do not understand and definitely cannot copy today. The scans also looked at stones that were never finished. There is a place called the Kachikata Quarry where dozens of giant blocks are still sitting in the ground. Some are halfway cut out of the mountain. In this spot, you can see the same two types of work. 
The older cuts are clean and precise, while the newer ones look like someone was just hacking away at the rock. It is as if the first builders had a power tool and the second group only had hammers. This two-tier quality is a huge clue that two different groups were involved. Even more interesting is that some of these giant stones were left right in the middle of the path between the quarry and the temple. These are called the tired stones. One of them weighs about 70 tons. It is just sitting on a slope ready to be moved, but it never arrived. The researchers used radar to look under the ground where these stones are sitting, hoping to find a road or a ramp. They found nothing. There is no evidence of a road that could support 70 tons of weight. If they were using wooden rollers, those rollers would have been crushed into dust under that much pressure. Basically, we have the stones and we know where they came from, but we have no idea how they got across the valley. The terrain is very rough. There are steep hills and a fast-moving river in the way. Moving a 50-ton block downhill is actually more dangerous than moving it up. You have to worry about the stone rolling away and crushing everyone. You would need huge cables and braking systems. The Inca supposedly only had ropes made from plant fibers. If those ropes snapped, there was no way to stop the stone, but the mystery goes even deeper than just moving the heavy blocks. Physics that should not work. The river crossing is the part that really keeps engineers up at night. The Urubamba River is not a calm stream, it is a powerful force of nature. To get those 50-ton stones across, the builders would have needed a very strong bridge. However, building a bridge that won't collapse under 100,000 pounds is hard even for people with modern steel. If they didn't use a bridge, they would have had to wait for the dry season and hope the river was shallow enough to drag the stones across the bottom. But even then, the mud would have sucked the stones down like quicksand. Once they got the stones to the other side, they had to pull them up a mountain that rises 1,000 feet. That is like pulling a house to the top of a 100-story skyscraper. Experts from MIT tried to figure out how many people it would take to move just one of these stones. Their best guess was over 2,000 men pulling in perfect rhythm. But on a narrow mountain path, there isn't enough room for 2,000 people to stand, let alone pull a rope. The space is too small for the math to work. And then there is the problem of how they lifted them into place. The stones in the temple are not just sitting on the ground, they are raised up on terraces. And get this, the scans show that the stones were placed with such a perfect fit that the builders had to get it right on the first try. You can't just test fit a 50-ton rock. Once you drop it into place, it is stuck. In modern construction, we use shims and cranes to make tiny adjustments. The ancient builders didn't have those. They had to be perfect before the stone ever touched the wall. Dr. Kenneth Wright, a water expert, found another secret hidden in the terraces. The whole fortress is built on a very smart drainage system. He discovered that the water does not just run off the surface, but flows through the walls themselves. This was a big discovery because it shows the builders knew how to keep the ground from getting too wet. If the soil gets too soggy, it can cause a landslide. By building drains inside the walls, they made the whole mountain safer. This is a level of thinking that most cities didn't achieve until the 1800s. This drainage system is also why the site is earthquake-proof. When the ground shakes, the water inside the stones acts like a cushion. The stones are shaped like a giant puzzle, so they can jiggle and move a tiny bit without falling down. After 500 years and many huge earthquakes, the walls are still standing. Spanish churches in the area have fallen down many times, but these walls never budge. It shows that whoever built this understood the earth better than the people who came after them. The most shocking part is what the lasers found buried deep under the main square. The 2025 scans revealed that there is an entire older structure buried under the plaza. This older building is made of stones that are even bigger than the ones we can see today. And that's putting it lightly because these buried foundations are joined with even better precision than the Sun Temple. This supports the idea that the Inca found these ruins and built their own city on top of them. They were essentially recycling a masterpiece left behind by a group that lived there thousands of years before. Dr. John Peter de Jong, who has mapped the site for five years, noticed a strange pattern. He found that the deeper you dig into the history of the site, the smarter the engineering looks. Usually people get better at building over time. They start with simple huts and eventually build skyscrapers. 
but here the oldest stones are the most perfect. The ones built by the actual Inca are smaller and not as well fitted. It's like finding a supercomputer under a pile of old calculators. It doesn't make sense unless there was a high-tech group that disappeared. Spanish writers in the 1500s actually heard stories about this. When they asked the Inca who built these giant walls, the Inca elders said they didn't know. They told the Spanish that the big stones were already there when their great-grandfathers arrived. They called these builders the first people or connected them to a god named Viracocha. For a long time, historians thought these were just fairy tales. But the new scans and the weathering of the stones suggest the legends might be true. The stones themselves have a story to tell through their crystals. When a rock is cut and exposed to the air, the crystals on the surface start to change very slowly. By measuring this change, the 2025 team found that the monoliths have been exposed for at least 2,000 years. That is more than 1,500 years before the Inca Empire even started. This means the stones were already old when the Inca first saw them. They were just the latest people to call this amazing place home. The mystery of the knobs on the stones also got a new look. These are little bumps that stick out from the face of the rocks. Most people thought they were used to tie ropes for moving the stones. But the scans show that these knobs have no rope marks or scratches on them at all. If they were used to pull 50 tons, the rope would have left a mark in the rock. Since there are no marks, the knobs must have been for something else. Maybe for alignment, or maybe they were just decorative. It's one more piece of the puzzle that we still haven't solved. It makes us wonder if we are finally ready to accept that history is not as simple as we were taught. So, where does this leave us? We have a fortress in Peru that uses construction methods we cannot explain. We have 50-ton stones moved without wheels, river crossings that would challenge modern engineers, and a precision fit that beats our best laser tools. The 2025 scans have officially exposed the fact that the Inca were likely not the original builders of the megalithic core. They were brilliant people who maintained and added to the site, but the melted joints and the perfectly flat surfaces belong to an era we don't have records for. There is a big gap in our understanding of the past. We like to think that history always moves forward, but Olin Taitambo proves that sometimes knowledge is lost. Whoever designed these walls understood how to handle water pressure and earthquake forces at a level that is truly world-class. They didn't need a written language to do it, they left their blueprints in the stones themselves. As we dig deeper into the 85% of the site that is still buried, we might find more proof of this lost civilization. The real story of Olin Taitambo is just beginning to come to light. We are moving away from the idea of primitive people and realizing that the ancient world was full of geniuses. Hands down, this is the most important discovery in South American archaeology in decades. It forces us to rethink what humans were capable of doing with just the materials they found in nature. The stones are still there, still perfect, and still waiting for us to figure out their secrets. Is it possible that a high-tech civilization lived in the Andes thousands of years before we thought? What do you think built these walls? Let us know below and don't forget to like and subscribe.